lot of especially men get individually insecure and upset about it and it's like you as a man and an individual can be the best person in the world but if you're still sitting there and you still not doing anything to fight yeah, sexism, to, to yeah. really help women, then you still contributing to, to yeah. keeping these other men trash as well. <laughs>
is when like those big things where like we put like it's like the number one sin you should not do. Don't come in our church. Like we not accepting you. Like for some reason we've made homopho- uh, uh, homosexuals like feel so excluded. Because relatability is one of the key thing in life. Because the only way you can actually try to understand from an individual is actually trying to relate to him, so you can actually explain your perspective, and he can actually understand that when, when there's no relatability, he actually will not understand your perspective. You can only be homosexual, but you can also share experiences that I share too. So being actually able to actually talk with that person, explain your perspective, and actually let him know why you pick, why you choose to be a, a homosexual individual is actually important. So being in the sense where we are developing, and it starts by actually going back to your roots and actually explaining to your parents why you chose to make that decision. So we actually are getting better in a sense. Um, I think, like he was kind of saying, like, <clears throat> it's, like it, it's really up to our generation, especially as like still being young as college students. Now is the time to really speak up about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And, and I think with, in terms of my community, like cisgender and straight males, it's like more along the lines of our duty to kind of also educate others. It's deeply rooted in like generations like that came before us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who still like perpetuate those same like, ideals and stuff like that. It's, it's people like us who like go to diverse schools like VCU, who interact with multiple communities. Now it's on us to kind of like break a lot of those like traditions. You know what I'm I want to hit on the, um, where is it at? I want to hit on, nah, it's not that one. It's the, I want to hit on the trouble showing and expression emotion. That is one of the biggest things I've noticed. And I feel like I feel like a lot of these other I feel like a lot of, of these of these other issues that we kinda touched on come from our inability to express our emotion. Why do you think we have trouble black men um, expressing and showing our emotion? Anybody can jump in. That's that. Um I think it's one of those things is like it was so I say as black men, it was taught to us at a younger age that it's not okay to express itself. It's not okay to show those emotions. Um, if you do so, you're soft, you're weak, you're a punk. And so because of that, growing up, it's one of those things that you tend to, you bottle it up, you keep it inside. And then when you get to the stage where it's time to express those things, you're having a hard time trying to figure out how to do it because you don't know how to. Mm. Um, you've never been in that situation where you needed to. So now when it comes to the point where you have to do it, you're, you're lost. Like you, you really just don't know what to do. Right. I agree, but I also, for me, like, I don't have, and it took me a while to get to this point, I definitely had to learn, a lot of people had to mm-hmm. help me, but I don't have an issue showing my emotions, but I think we talk less about, you have to know how to create space for people to show their emotions as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm not about to open up to you if I already feel like you're just not gonna respond appropriately or not, you're not gonna handle that appropriately. I can be as emotional as you want me to be, but if you're not responding and you're not comprehending what I need to help me through that, then there's no point in me doing that. Yeah, it's definitely too issue. Even when people do ask you, like, oh, how are you? Like, you kind of expect it to say fine. Mm. Like, it doesn't really matter what's going on in your life. Like, you could really not be fine, and the world could be, like, your world could be kind of crumbling. That's but facts. No matter who asks you, I'm fine, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like we, we put that front on. As men, you're supposed to be, like, a strong person and stuff like that. And we're kind of touching on how that's, like, emotion is seen as weakness. Mm-hmm. And so... To not show weak, you're just supposed to say you're fine when you really could not be fine. I am a, I'm aware of these things, and I like to bring the conversation forth, but me personally, I still struggle with show, expressing my emotions and understanding my emotions. When certain things happen, um, I, I tend to get angry because I don't know how to process certain things. So I deal with it by getting angry and lashing out. You feel me? And I think that's a lot of us men in general, uh, uh, especially black men do. It's still a, a, a process of getting into one of your emotions. And I feel like you have to spend that quality time with yourself for a long period of time to really kind of like dig deep in like, why did, I react, why, did I, why did I react that way? Why did I say that? You know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of things we do are subconscious. So we gotta like really, you know, reflect. Like when, when would y'all say like, is the last time you've had like a real conversation with somebody else about your emotions? Yeah. That's, 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 that's question of the day. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, last time I had yeah. one of those real conversations. So I'm blessed to be in like a relationship where I can open up like that. Mm-hmm. I've been with this person for the majority of my life. So I say like maybe like a month or two ago. I mean that that sounds like a long time. Yeah, but yeah, it's, hey, it's a lot more. It's, it's like surprisingly, it's a lot more <laughs> recent than anybody else has. But uh, 
you know, she kind of challenges me to really open up and speak on those matters that I don't want to speak on. So for me, it was yesterday. I cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh, you good? You good? You good? For me, it was yesterday. Like, so for me with my friends. For us to be close, you gotta be willing to accept the emotional side of me. I'm just an emotional person. If I feel like I can't open up to you and, and have that dialogue with you, then why am I friends with you, right? So we check in with each other a lot more frequently and it doesn't even feel like we're having an emotional conversation. It's like, I'm asking how you are and you're really telling me and we can work through that on a more consistent basis instead of like, three months pass and I found out you've been holding something in and now mm-hmm. we gotta try and fix it really quickly instead of when we could have been checking in on a more routine basis and actually been working through it together. So, I mean, kind of jumping off that, like what, the people that don't really have those conversations, like what would you say is like holding you back from having those conversations? Fear. When I'm like having those deep conversations and I could see it's going toward that, like about me for real, for real, I kind of like, why not? Like, I kind of like stray away from it. I kind of like change the subject. I don't know why, but when, when it really gets down, like, to it and people really try to get that out of me. Like, how are you really, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, I just, it's fear for me. Fear tends to um, keep me from digging that deep to myself. Yeah. Are you afraid of your own emotions or how other people react to them? Both. Yeah, I'm both. It's both. Um, for me, I will say understanding. Like I was saying, I'm a logic-based individual, so the way I process information, when I try to explain it to other people, it don't understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, look, I just spent all this time <laughs> trying to, <laughs> I process everything I just told you, you're gonna tell me you don't understand it. So that just, the fact that you don't understand where I'm coming from, that just makes me not even wanna actually tell you what's going on. Cause no matter how I tell you, you still don't understand. That's why most of the time I actually talk to my brother first. Cause he's the one that understands the most. When I talk to him, he try to tell me how to tell other people. Because the way I process them is just different. I, I, feel like, I feel like as a man, it's like you're kind of like your life is orchestrated to where you're not really made to express yourself. You, you're made to like use grit to fight through things. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I feel like for women, they kind of like approach it to where they, they're trying to express themselves and they have something that they have to like get out. And I feel like for men, it's more so like a judge of character if you let that out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. I don't, I don't like, personally, I don't mind expressing myself, but it's like, I will say, like, I guess I am a victim of, like, a judgment of character, because I feel like, for me, I kind of thrive off of grit, and it's like, if I express myself, then I feel like it's kind of like a chink in my arm, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's something I'm trying to work on, but it's like, if you, if you spill your heart out, and even, like, um, I seen, this, I seen this article, and it was like, women are more attracted to, like, in a way, men who don't express themselves men, they are they're attracted to men it's like quote unquote like i'm not gonna say bad but just like it's it's a chase like they're trying to figure out what you feel you know what i'm saying and i feel like that's how the world is for men anyway you know what i'm saying to where it's like if you even if you go back to generations it's like we we've always had like a hard job you know what i'm saying whether it's like physical labor whatever the case may be and it's like the only way to really fight through that is to kind of mask some things you know what i'm saying so it's like it's a, I, I feel like, kind of like what you said, I think it's the development. It's like, it's a, it's a skill that you kind of have to like, practice, you know what I'm saying? If you don't practice it, then you're not really gonna know how to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's, so. a, it's an everyday struggle. Yeah, it's, it's, like, yeah, it's a nice little play. When you do kind of mad certain things, it kind of does give off like a false sense of stability. Mm-hmm. Like to some people, like how you said, like women may be attracted to those who don't like express themselves. And that's, that could be the reason, like it gives also a false sense of stability. Like, whereas, like, mm. me, if I was to continue and, like, like, if I was mad, if I was sad, and I was, like, showing everybody, like, yeah, like, and I'm just telling you, like, all my, like, troubles and stuff like that. They're like, they crazy you, or something. Yeah, they'll be like, wow, like, man. Yeah, they yeah. 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 crazy. Yeah, I'm like, 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 mess with bro, like, you know what I'm saying? Which, yeah, that's, but, like, that's you see, like, someone who, like, everybody's always going through something. That's something that we kind of, I think some people kind of forget. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether I mask it really well or whether I, like, don't tell you about it, it's still, it may still be something going on. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And that false sense of stability that a lot of people may give off, it, it may even like, think, it may even give off that same like notion to yourself as well. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm good, cause I'm not out here like crying, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. So I'm good, so I'm gonna just keep doing this and keep doing that. But at the end of the day, like you might actually be like, deteriorating yourself in some mm-hmm. type of way, but it's like happening like gradually. You know what I'm saying? So that's crazy. That's how I feel about like, some people like expressing emotions.
um, you mentioned earlier uh, hyper masculinity, but before we jump into that, because that's a whole thing. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> before we jump into that, you I just want to that. Right. I was thinking that. Yeah. Honestly, because that's yeah. a big conversation. It, it's it's a whole con- like it's a whole day worth of conversation. But um, before we like touch on hyper masculinity, um, what do y'all? What is a man to y'all? My opinion, it differs probably from like the the general example of what a man is, but literally just keeping my word on everything I do and um, just being a good person behind closed doors. I don't necessarily have to be the alpha male in every situation, but I have to be there for the people that I say I be there for. Like at the end of the day, I keep my word and I'm gonna do what I always say I'm gonna do. Like I don't, I don't have to be a warrior or nothing like that, but mm-hmm. as long as I'm dependable to you, then I'm doing my job. So that's the man to me. The person that I kind of model myself after is my father. The hard work, the the um, mostly the hard work, honestly, because like, for my entire life he's kind of been working to make sure everything was good with my family, around the house and stuff like that, with our family, extended family, stuff like that. So just a person that kind of works to make sure themselves and the people that they care about are okay. That's what I feel like a man is. Learning is growth. It's an area of growth, you know what I'm saying? So if you're not willing to learn, you're not necessarily willing to like to grow in a sense. And then another big thing for me, like if you're not an advocate of women and children, then I honestly can't say you're a man in my opinion. And you don't have to be like biologically male to do any of those things, you know what I'm saying? And do like, like want to like make like a perceived notion of what a man is. And it's usually built off of like certain like stimuli that honestly have nothing to do with like oh, yeah. helping anyone or like being exactly. an advocate mm-hmm. or simply just being someone who like wants to add to like so, like life itself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, that's what a man is. Um, for me, I live by six mores and values. Um, service, respect, integrity, family, faith. And the last one's academics. Each of them is holds certain what's it called corners that you actually live by, like respect, like he was talking about showing advocacy for women and children. That's the respect aspect of it. But individuals that actually has these characteristics that actually try to develop in each and every way. Mm-hmm. That's what makes me think that you a man. It's not really about you just because one day you just feel like and you do the right stuff, and the next day you just feel like you you don't feel like it, so you don't do the right stuff. It's like nah. It don't work like that. So these characters is what makes me think I ain't the a man. I feel like real men are natural servants. Right. Like to their families, to the world, to, to their circle. Like they just have no problem just giving. Um, with, with like that be wisdom, knowledge, things like they just, they're, they're servants. I feel like boards are the people who, who like being served, who like being everything just falling in their lap. You know what I'm saying? I feel like people who are, or men who are servants, like those I can say are real men. You can still be a boss, you can still be a CEO, you can still be, you know what I'm saying, the one in charge by serving people. Uh, for me, I would say, in like the family aspect, um, kind of like I was saying, like kind of model what a man is after my father. So um, somebody that provides for the family in more than just the financial setting, being accessible, being available, um, <clears throat> Also being able to provide his family with the tools to be successful after they're gone. Like you can do what you need to do, but after you're gone, if your family can't continue to thrive and reach to the next level, yeah. what did you really accomplish? Legs. That's right. Where do you think our idea of what a man comes from? Like I think a lot of the things that like we think as masculine comes from maybe coaches, maybe our, our pops. Um, maybe certain people, you know, or maybe society. So like, where, where do you think the idea of what a man uh, comes from? Yeah, so I, there's a lot of different places you can take that. I study African-American studies and social justice. So the first thing I think of is for African-American men, um, a lot of that actually stems, stems from slavery. Slave owners conditioned enslaved Africans to believe that they were more desirable, especially African men, if they were stronger and could do more work and can provide more. And that's something that kind of continued out through history, right? So even on the auction block, men that were more muscular and were taller and could do more, um, even producing more children, were more profitable. That's something that we still consider to be true. We just don't talk about it. Um, So even when you look at the civil rights movement and other revolutions and movements, you can go back and actually see a lot of black leaders 
told black men in other communities within, within the black community that you have to be a certain type of black man to be presentable, especially to white people, and that white people are only gonna accept a certain type of you. In 2019, we still hold to be true that in order to be respected, not even just by white society, but by the African-American community and the black community overall, that you have to be this very stringent type of black male and that you cannot defer from that. Um, and I think a lot of people are trying to challenge that now, but we don't really know, you know, if we're not that one idea of the black male, then, then what are we?